Okay, all you humans, uh, what I'm doing today is I just thought I would make a video on this because I sandblasted these two tanks. And I want to show you something I did with the sandblaster and how effective it was. And I think you can make some improvements on your own home homegrown sandblasters. So these are two, two air tanks. This one had uh, a lot of thick green paint on it. I hit it with a grinder and it just gummed it up. And there was rust spots here and there and rust on the seams. So I said, gee, you know, the grinder is just not going to do it. And the same, I had this tank here too. This is a 60-gallon tank. And this tank had sat outside for years. It's not, you know, rust, bad rust, but everywhere the tank was scratched, everywhere it had any paint removed on it, uh, it just surface rust, surface rust all over the place. So I decided, okay, I had built this sandblaster and put it together over the years and I said oh, let me try and use it then let's see what happens so I'm in this room here and we re remodeling the room for something else actually but I decided okay let's use this place so I put up the plastic because if you don't put plastic up and you sandblast every window will have grit in it every time you raise the window every time you do anything you're gonna have sandblasting grit ruining the whole place so I put up the plastic, I put some fans down there, they're the wrong kind of fans, but I had those fans for years, and I just stuck them up there and put a little hole in the wall for them, and uh, they worked fine. I put a board in front of that box to keep any heavy-duty grit out of it. They still work fine, and so I'm, I'm thinking, okay, great, but the, the dust goes through the motor, which is not that, not the way it's supposed to be. Anyway, here is a Harbor Freight sandblaster. Now, this thing is absolutely totally worthless unless you're working on some little dinky small part. Because, look at the fill thing. You can't get anything in there. You've got to put, get a funnel and pour the stuff in. It takes a long time. It doesn't blast very long. And the big problem, the, the thing I'm going to show you today that I wanted to mention was if you notice every homegrown sandblaster and these Harbor Freight things, what do they do? They stick a, a shutoff valve at the end of the nozzle here. And that, I think, is what causes all the problems. Because every time you shut the stupid thing off, you still got air going into the tank. And there's the momentum of the stuff going through there. So when you shut that off, it seems like it just slugs up that hose. And the thing does, once you go to start again, it won't work right. So here's the thing I got. I, I made this thing, and I had these parts. I collected these parts for over, like, probably last 10 years. The big thing was this tank. I found this at a surplus place, and it's got that hatch on the top. You take those bolts out, and you got a huge area to pour the sand in. You can put a filter screen up there, pour it in. There's, it's just great. You can look right in there. You can see what's going on, if there's any moisture in there. So what I did was I used the same standard valve that we all use, the ball valve at the bottom. It's a one-inch ball valve with a pipe T. I made a little bit of a fancy thing, and I have no idea if it works or not, but the air that's going through that T, I, I extended on the inside of the T a little bit so the air actually goes past where the sand drops down it. It's, you know, in theory, it's creating a, a venturi effect. I don't know, I don't know how, how good it is. But anyway, the sand blaster works great. But here's the thing I want to show you. I put, this is your air intake here. And this is, this, these two valves are at 90 degrees. And this, this air here dumps the air in the hose and in the tank. And I used the biggest stuff I could reasonably use here to dump it out as fast as possible. Now, I did luck out, and I had a muffler from, a, from another compressor somewhere. And I put that on, and actually, when you're, when you're standing here with no earplugs in or anything, you can dump this tank, and it, it, it's really hardly any noise. It's, and it's not an obnoxious amount of air coming. It just seems to go into that thing and blow out. But here's the deal. Here's the here's the end of the here's the end of the blaster. I've got a 3/16 nozzle on there. I got my LED light with some plastic over the lens. But if you notice, I don't have any shutoff valve there, zero. And uh, what I do is I have the shutoff valve here. When I'm blasting, I put this down when it's blasting. That puts the air in here and it cuts this off. When I stop blasting, I just yank this handle up, and it cuts the air going into the tank off. 
and it also dumps the air out of the tank really quickly. And I used this, it took me, it took me about two and a half hours to blast these two tanks all the way down, all nice clean steel. I got all around the legs down there and everything. And I never had the thing clog up and I, I never had to refill it either. And I never had it acting badly. It, ne it always just worked. I shut it off a bunch of times, turned it back on and, and, and it seemed to recover fine and, and work. And so there I'm happy. I'm very happy with this because uh, the, you know, the little Harbor Freight thing is worthless. You, it, you, you couldn't have, you, in my opinion, you, there's no way you're going to sandblast these two tanks with that Harbor Freight thing because it's going to just take you all day. I even um, tried putting a, making a bigger nozzle for that thing just to see if I could get some more oomph out of it. But this thing works great. It's a, it was a lucky find on the tank. The tank is a huge part of this because I had, I had this extra air thing on the side. I had the bottom uh, opening for the one-inch pipe, and the hatch makes the whole thing work right. Without the hatch, you're really suffering. Okay, the next thing is, if you notice, we sandblasted inside. Now, anybody who sandblasts inside is going to know one thing right off the bat, is you sandblast, then you go out, you get lunch, then you come back, you do some more sandblast, you go out, answer the phone, you go out, use the computer, you go out, do this, go potty a couple times. Well, pretty soon, you have a trail of sandblast grit all the way, everywhere you went. All, the whole shop is covered. Everywhere you go, you've got to feel with your feet that you're walking on grit. So what I have is I have this vacuum cleaner. I can sweep up that grit, but you never get all of it up. It never, it never gets clean. And you got all the grit in all the cracks and the crevices and everywhere, and you're, you're just fighting that grit all the time. This, sand, this vacuum cleaner is huge. It's, a, it's the best vacuum cleaner I ever bought. It's got a huge Gore-Tex filter bag it's got the bucket down there where you to fill the stuff in. The bucket's easy to come out, easy to go in, you know, no big deal. You don't have to mess with things. You just have a little foot pedal that raises it up and unhooks it. And then, of course, it's, it's a 10-horse motor on there. And it's got a big turbine in there. And I, I because we don't have three-phase power, I have my trans, homemade transformer converter, the homemade transformer there in the box with the capacitors in it to run it. But this thing runs fine, and I have a nice floor tool, and I can, I can use the crevice tool. I can get all the sandblast grit out of everywhere. Then I come back with the floor tool, and I just, I just go over the whole entire floor, and everywhere I've been, you know, I got the little, my little trail of sandblaster grit, and it, and it just makes the floor nice and clean, and it's done. It's finished. Without that, you're, you're just kind of fighting that grit all the time. Now, the next thing that you need... The next big thing is the air compressor. Here I have the ten, a 10 horse air compressor. Now this is a Curtis D97. It's a huge cast iron thing and it works great. If you're trying to sandblast, which I did for, for many years, I used a five horse compressor to sandblast and it's just a waste of time again. You're, you you got to use an eighth inch nozzle and you, you're doing these little spots and you can never do anything big like those tanks. Here, what I found, I, I never used this for sandblasting before. I had no idea how it would work and I wasn't sure of the CFM requirements for the 3 16th nozzle. But I put that 3 16th nozzle on there and I had the regulator. I ran this through a regulator and a water separator and I had it set, I had the regulator set for about 140 pounds which with the thing running put about 100 pounds into that tank out there. And I, I sandblasted for, like I said, for about two and a half hours. Never ran out of air. Ne the air never slowed down. I never felt like I needed more air. So I, don't, I, I didn't put a camera on the air compressor itself. I don't know if it started and shut off a couple times. I would assume the air compressor probably ran full time, all the time. But this thing here, this is, uh, it's, again, it's, uh, I, I, to me, you, know, you don't have three phase in your shop, so you've got to have a way of running an air compressor like this. I just use a transformer converter. I have a, I have the transformer in the back here. It's a little, little transformer to work, work it. And I have, uh, I plug it into the two, it's a 60 amp breaker I think we got over there. Let's plug it in with the welder plug over there. And it works great. 
Now I do have these two switches on the front, and the one switch on the left, that that turns the air compressor on and off. Of course, there's a 60 amp breaker there too. But then the switch on the right puts it to a, a continuous run. So that way, these uh, unloader valves just unload and the motor never stops. It just idles and goes from idle to full bore, idle, full bore, idle to pumping. So it runs from about 125 to 150 on this compressor. And that makes a huge difference in, in your sandblasting. So I think that personally, when you're sandblasting, you've got to have the tank, you've got to have the fill capacity on the top, you've got to have some kind of fill port on that tank, or the biggest hole you can get. And I think the biggest improvement that I made with that was having those two valves there where I dumped the air out. Dumping the air out instead of having the shutoff valve on the end, I think that made a whole difference because I never slugged up that, that hose with the grit which basically just plogs up the whole hose. you got to take the nozzle off to get it cleared out. I never had to do that with this. worked great. So that's it. That's, uh, that's the sandblasting with the, the, the three or four items that you need to do it right.